Welcome to another build guide for Season 19 Patch 267A, this time tackling the Monk class. A quick reminder to like, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. And with that said, let's get straight into the build here. So I'm using two different sets. The first one is the brand new set, the Patterns of Justice up to the 2P set bonus. And then the other set, the Sun Wook, also the Monkey King's Garb up to the 6P set bonus. So let's go over these set bonuses together here. Uh, for the first one... The Patterns of Justice, the two-piece uh, Sweeping Wind gains the effect of every rune and movement speed is increased by 5% for each stack of Sweeping Wind. So this is going to be giving me all of the movement speed that I require so that obviously I can go through the rift much much quicker and also it gives me every single rune for Sweeping Wind so that means more uh, resource generation, that means I can free stuff, I just get everything that Sweeping Wind has to offer which is going to be helping me out but mainly I'm taking this two piece for all of the movement speed it's very very good to have especially when paired with Tempest Rush itself which is the ability that this build will be dealing all the damage with and then the other set as I said here uh, the Sun Wukos Monkey King's Garb two piece this gives us 50% uh, damage reduction which we don't really need since I'm going to be using the gold wrap uh, four piece Piece. Again, it's not really that important at all, but then the six piece, this is the main reason why I'm taking this uh, set up to the six piece. It's because of all the damage that I get. So for us, we only care about Tempest Rush. So the two other abilities we don't really care for, but uh, you actually gain 1500% more damage for each stack of Sweeping Wind that we have. So 1500% by 13 stacks because we will be able to go up to 13 stacks of sweeping wind through our tempest rush so our tempest rush will be dealing a whole bunch of damage a lot more damage than the brand new set will allow tempest rush to deal or sweeping wind for that matter so yeah uh, the monkey king's carp is still going to be uh, the best set to use pretty much for that reason because we can now go up to 13 stacks so that's the all of the sets information now for the other pieces uh, the wrists here caesar's memento this gives us a whole bunch of damage as you can see right here 800 percent more damage for our tempest rush for the next five seconds after you hit with a blind, a freeze or a stun, which I will be covering how that is going to be happening once I get to the abilities portion of the guide. But just keep in mind, like, don't worry, we're going to have this bonus up at all times. And that is obviously a whole bunch of damage. Then uh, the belt here, gold wrap, as I mentioned, of course, this pretty much makes you indestructible. You will not take any damage because of this belt. So that's great. And when paired with the Everest band, it works out even better because as I pick up gold, I am immune to damage. And on top of that, my health and pickup radius is increased dramatically, pretty much the entire screen uh, up to <clears throat> basically... 30 stacks so it's one yard then it becomes 30 yards which is essentially the entire screen so i'll be picking up everything with ease no problem at all now i do want to say when it comes to the stats on the gear that you're that you're seeing don't worry about that i'm going to be sharing all of the stats that you want on every single piece of gear in the link to this build in the description of this video i just have some random stats here so not everything is perfect uh, on this i just got like whatever items I could find pretty much to put this build together but again when it comes to stats don't worry what you want will be in the link for the other ring obsidian ring of the zodiac this is amazing for cooldown reduction reducing the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you hit with a resource spender that's going to be happening all the time because tempest rush is going to be our resource spender and obviously we'll be using that all the time to kill everything in the rift so we're constantly going to be getting this cooldown reduction through the ring and the most important thing about this um, i try to not put a lot of abilities that have cooldown reduction because I want this to mainly go and be funneled into this big 
cooldown right here on Epiphany. It's a 60 second cooldown, so I want my Obsidian Ring to be helping that out the most. So it works out very, very well. You won't have a permanent uptime, but it will be very close. And you don't need a permanent uptime, like you're not just gonna run out of resource immediately, so you will be fine. I've tested this in a, in a lot of rifts, and it's always worked out fine once I figured the build out. And then the Sanwuko's chance here for the neck piece, it is a part of the set, so it's helping out with the set piece bonuses, so very important to have that. And then, after that, we can get into the weapons. Vengeful Wind, this is key for Season 19. The stacks have been increased from 7 up to 10, so this is what allows us to get to 13 stacks because just through Vengeful Wind we can get up to 10 stacks here and it also increases the damage of Sweeping Wind which we will still be using but it's not really that important anyway. Uh, it's not really going to be dealing much damage. Our bulk of the damage is coming from Tempest Rush, but we still obviously want to use this because of the three extra stacks, 1500% more damage per stack, so very important. And then for the other weapon here, the new and improved weapon, hitting with Tempest Rush will activate Cyclone Strike, and both skills will be dealing up to, I believe, uh, 600, yes, 600% 600 more damage. And obviously, I want this buff mainly for my Tempest Rush, I don't really care for the damage that Cyclone Strike deals, but the extra damage for Tempest Rush is awesome, and... With that said, Cyclone Strike is still going to be important, but not for damage purposes, just for other purposes that will relate to damage through my Tempest Rush, which will I again explain once I get to the skills. Now, Legendary Gems, obviously the three are going to be a boon of the Hoarder. Of course, it's a Nephilim Rift, where I get more movement speed, which for this build is incredibly good. And then we get a whole bunch more gold. Uh, Bane of the Trapped, again, a great uh, gem to have. We're always going to be right next to the enemies anyway, so this added damage here will be up all the time. And then the Tejuk is great for Tempest Rush. It not only gives us more armor, which synergizes well with the Gold Rap, but on top of that, we gain even more damage when we spend resource on a channeled skill. Tempest Rush is a channeled skill, so we deal even more damage basically thanks to this gem. Can I skew powers? Balance this as you would expect increases the damage of Tempest Rush by 600%, so this is just increasing damage for that ability. Nemesis Bracers, of course, uh, Shrines and Pylons will spawn an enemy champion, so you get more elite packs, you get more DBs, you get more materials, loot, and all of that. And then the Ring of Royal Grandeur to make the set bonuses work, to get the 6-piece set bonus for the San Wukos, while I have the 2-piece set bonus for the new set patterns of justice. And then for the skills themselves, the passives, uh, I'm running with Relentless Assault because this synergizes very well with my Caesar's Memento. You deal 20% more damage to enemies blinded, frozen or stunned. And Momentum, again, an amazing passive which synergizes well with Tempest Trash. We're always going to be on the move. And because of that, we're always going to have this 20% damage buff active. Beacon of Yitar is just a great passive. It just straight up gives you 20% cooldown reduction, and Exalted Soul to help out a little bit with my spirit regeneration, especially in between my epiphanies. Very important to have, and it helps out a great deal. For the skills, Cyclone Strike with Wall of Wind, a Cold Rune. Now, don't worry about the cost. This isn't going to be costing us anything because this will be automatically activated through this weapon right here. So this is free to use, it pulls up enemies next to you, which is great. 
that's where we want them so that we can kill them easier but the most important thing is that it will be freezing the enemies for 1.5 seconds after they've been pulled in which means that I will be proccing my 800% damage multiplier from the bracers and my 20% from my passives so that is how I'm proccing the damage there through cyclone strike it's an awesome way to go about doing it and it's all gonna happen on its own passively because it's automatically going to use or cast cyclone strike because of the weapon then tempest trash our damage dealer it will be costing us 30 spirit as we channel through and it will be dealing lightning damage. Now why did I go with electric field? Why am I using lightning? Because of this weapon. This weapon will always roll with lightning damage so because of that the lightning rune is going to be the strongest rune because I will always have you know in this case 18% more lightning damage and then I can pair this element through the other pieces like on the brace or even the neck piece to get more lightning and because we have this extra element on the weapon I feel like going with the lightning rune here is your best play for the most amount of damage. Then mystic ally is fantastic because both the passive and the active are great and I know that this has a 30 second cooldown but the moments where you're actually going to need to activate this to get the 100 spirit are going to be next to never and if you do again it's going to be like maybe once in a rift maybe i never personally had to activate it but it's there in case you need it maybe you didn't notice that your epiphany dropped you know you're a little bit tired tonight or whatever but passively it's still going to be helping us out a great deal it's going to passively give us spirit regen by four as our mystic ally is helping us out so that is great to have this is basically here to help out with our resource uh, sweeping wind with master of wind cold why because this is going to help with a uh, freezing enemies right for two seconds so it's gonna help out with cyclone strike we can freeze even more which means we will have more uptime on memento and the relentless assault it's just great great synergy a dashing strike obviously um it's just very very good for our movement for our utility you will have two stacks of these each stack will take around eight seconds but of course it'll be a bit less for us because we have good cooldown reduction and on top of that after you've used it you will gain a nice movement speed boost which is great to have so that just speaks for itself and then epiphany as i said on a 60 second cooldown this is fantastic this will just take care of all of your spirit regeneration issues that you might have she's gonna nullify all that and we don't even need an ingion to pull this off it's gonna happen it's gonna work without it you're gonna have very good uptime on this thing and it's basically here as i said for all the spirit regeneration so that's all of the information now i'm going to showcase to demonstrate this build in action for you inside of a torment 16 nephilim rift there is absolutely no paragon in my main stat so this is basically with 800 paragon once you've basically uh, filled up all of your tabs and now you're gonna just begin to put points in your main stat right it uh, is very strong it's very fast i know that wave of light obviously is still incredibly good to use but we've been using wave of light for the monk class for the past what four five seasons at least now so chances are most people are sick and tired of using that ability so this offers a nice little alternative and I know Tempest Rush was heavily sort of suggested to have something done with it by the community. It was an ability that uh, wasn't really used at all. So this will give you that opportunity. Maybe if you don't want to push with this, but you still want to use something different to farm those Nephilim Rifts. Well, there you go. With that said, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care.